Hi, my name is Callie Binkowski. I am the Academic Technology Coordinator for the College of Biological Sciences at the University of Minnesota. In that role, it's my job to help faculty use technology in their courses. And right now, that is all about Canvas. So my goal here today is to demonstrate for you the six core skills of Canvas. And then along the way, we're going to help you understand Canvas a little bit more by talking about the key differences between Canvas and Moodle and also some best practices that will help you get the most out of Canvas. So with six skills and that understanding to gain, there is a lot to cover in a very short amount of time, so this will go very fast and you will see a lot. So our goal here is really not to show you how this all happens, but to let you see it so that you can go back to your computer later and try it. To that end, I will provide a link to the handout in the description that will give you all the details so you can try all of these skills on your own. Uh, and if you want a slower paced version of this, feel free to visit um, our six core skills website that you see right there. Uh, you can get there from z.umn.edu slash canvas help. That's z.umn.edu slash canvas help. So with that, we are ready to begin with skill number one, navigating Canvas. So really this begins with how do I get to Canvas? The quickest way there, I find, is canvas.umn.edu. That would be canvas.umn.edu. Um, when you get there, you see what's known as your Canvas dashboard right here. So you'll see cards for each class. There'll be little icons down here, occasionally with red numbers by them that indicate you have messages to deal with. Over here is a to-do list. Because I'm an instructor, this to-do list would be things I have to grade. If it was a student, these would be things coming up. And then over here on the far left, you see the global menu. Now, the global menu will always be there, takes you to global things in Canvas. It has a lot of the obvious things, but there's two here that I want to point out because of their usefulness. The most useful one for instructors tends to be courses. When you click on courses, what you see is a listing of all of your courses. I have way too many courses. But another thing that you can do is down towards the bottom of the list is all courses, and that will give you a list of all of your courses past and present, and they have these stars next to them. If you highlight the star or unhighlight the star, that will indicate whether or not it should go on your dashboard. So it'll make it easier for you to manage your list. So for instructors, courses are really useful because it's always there. You can jump between your courses quite easily. For students, the calendar is a really useful one. I'm not actually going to head there, but the calendar will show students all of the assignments that they have with due dates for all of their classes in one place. We highly recommend instructors start using due dates because of the calendar. In Moodle, it was a little bit hard to change dates and update every semester. It's really simple to do this in Canvas and very quick. Highly recommend you start using due dates for your things in Canvas so that students can get the most out of using calendar. So to, to continue to navigate, instead of going back to my dashboard, I'm going to jump into courses and jump right to my sandbox site so you can see what it looks like inside a course. So here inside the course, what we've done for all of our instructors is we've created a home page, a landing page for the class. It usually has an image. It has some key information about the class. It has a few navigation hints. Uh, you can see over on the right, there's still a to-do list. And over here on the left, this is the course menu. The course menu is how both you and your students will navigate through the course. Now, you'll see a key difference here. Some things are in dark. That means students can see them and there's something in there for them to see. And some things are not in dark text. And that's because you've either hidden them or there's nothing in there for students to see. You can set how students navigate through your course by setting what shows up in this list for them. You do that under settings and there's a navigation tab for you to set that. So we're going to actually hit most of those pieces as we go through the six core skills. The place I want to go next for navigation is modules. Most courses are being set up so that modules is where all the content actually hides. And there's a reason we're doing this. It's because it looks a lot like Moodle. Look, see here you sort of have topics, and in the topics you have things for students to read or do. These are called modules in Canvas. Um, and you can see I've set this one to go by weeks. However, there are a couple of key differences. One of the things you need to get about this is that you'll notice there's no extra text, there's no pictures, there's no lines, um, there is only this, a list. 
you need to embrace the listiness of Canvas or of Canvas modules. This is what it is. It's a list of things that students need to go to. Um, and you can change what this looks, looks like, but you can't add pictures, you can't add text. So you need to think about a best practice for Canvas is always to make things proximal. If students need information to do something, make the something, put the resources in there, and then put the something on the list. So you can't add text or explanation here. You have to create something that has the explanation and then just add it to the list. We will talk lots more about that as we start creating assignments. Okay, while we're here, we actually have to talk about a really key difference between this view of Canvas and what Moodle looked like. So you know on Moodle, in order for something to exist, it had to go on that front page. That is not what Canvas is doing here. Modules is like a window into what we call the Canvas bucket. So let me try and explain this. Things in Canvas actually exist in buckets. There are two content buckets, so I'm going to go over to the menu here so you can see what they are. Pages, where you can type explanatory text and put pictures and create content, and files that you want to share with students, content buckets. And there are three activity buckets, which is where students do things. They might take quizzes, uh, they might have assignments, and they might have discussions. So these five buckets are where stuff in Canvas actually exists. How students get to them is either by being able to click on a bucket, and you'll notice we've hidden a lot of the buckets from students, because when they click on a bucket, they get to see everything in the bucket. Modules is actually the window to the buckets. The window. It allows you to put things in sequence for students. So here you are in modules, and let's say first thing you want them to do is look at a file. So you go into files and you make a link that shows up here on the main page. And then after that file, maybe you want them to take a quiz. So you go to quizzes and you put that up here on the page. And then maybe you want them to do an assignment. So you go to assignments and you put that link up here on the page. So it allows you to sequence it. But these are just links, windows into the buckets. When you delete something off modules, it doesn't delete it from the bucket. So I'm going to just show you that really quick so it sinks in because it's a key difference. If I go over here to the gear by delete this from modules and I go ahead and click remove, it'll check that I want to do this and I will click OK. So I know this is a page because it's got this lovely icon here. These are files. That is an external link. A thing to note, there is no bucket for external links. When you delete this, it's gone. Down here you see another kind of icon with a pencil. That one's an assignment. So I know this is a page. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And then I'm going to go to the Pages buckets. And you will see that when I view all the pages, Delete This from Modules is still there. So to keep your course clean and make sure you've got things where you want them, just know that deleting from Modules doesn't necessarily delete it. Sometimes you have to go into the bucket to get rid of it. So if I wanted to delete it here, I would go to the gear over here on this side and hit Delete. And I'll get a much redder warning saying if I delete it, it's gone for good. I don't want to do that. So with that, we've covered some basic navigation around Canvas. And one of the key differences between Canvas and Moodle that this modules page is a list, straight up a list. And it's a list that is a window into the places where Canvas actually stores things. With that, we are now ready to go on to skill two adding files to your Canvas class. So let's say I'm in this module and I want to add a file. I'm going to click the plus. Canvas is really easy to navigate around. So what kinds of things can I add? I can add an assignment, a quiz, a file, a content page, a discussion, a text header, so you can have a little bit of text on the modules page, an external URL or an external tool. I'm going to add a file. When I do this, notice what it does. It actually shows me all the files I already have in Canvas. But let's say we're going to update it. We're going to upload a new file. So I'm going to click New File. I get to choose a file. Oh, let's go really quick and just choose something miscellaneous sitting here. I don't even know what I got. Let me look. Uh, oh, look, it's an audio file. Here, we'll do an untitled form. Okay, so I'm going to open that. 
So I've chosen a file and then right here I can choose how to organize it. Now you need to know this is the files bucket. And in the files bucket, I had already been in there and I created folders to organize the content of my class. So we're going to say that this is just a resource file. And I'm going to put that right there and I'm going to go ahead and add the item. And what this is doing is it is simultaneously putting it in the files bucket, organizing it in the folder I had in the files bucket, and putting a link to it right there. So there's my link. Um, by the way, that's a really cruddy name. Doesn't tell me anything about it. If I click the edit over here underneath the gear, I get to see the name and I can change the name to say, what was it? It's a form for students. Uh, this is an accessibility thing. It helps to have your files named in a way that you can name them a similar thing on modules. So when a student clicks on it, the file name matches it so that they know they're in the right spot. So I'm just going to go ahead and update that for now so you can see how to do that. One of the other things I can do on modules is shift it around. I grab these set of dots over on the other side and I can move it wherever I want, including into other modules. So it's pretty easy to move this stuff around. All right, we'll leave it right there. Okay, this is a really typical way to use Canvas as a place to hold all the resources uh, that you use in a class. That's typically how we've used Moodle, but there is a better way to do this. Consider adding the resources students need where they need them. We call this being proximal. It's probably not the right use of the word, but we're going to call it the proximal best practice. This file sitting in this list doesn't really mean anything to anybody. But if I needed this, um, say for an assignment, put it in the assignment. There's an easy way to add the link to that file in the assignment itself. Don't put it here unless it's something that is an assignment itself or is something else they need. Try putting your resources where students need them, with the assignment they need to do, with the quiz they need to study for. There's lots of better places to put these things. So just try and remember to put files where they're supposed to go, where they're most useful to students. Okay, that would be skill two. Skill three is to create an assignment. So now we're going to finally create something for students to do. And we're going to add the plus this time. And we're going to go, and this time we're going to choose Assignments. And we're going to add a brand new assignment. Notice the list is still here. These are all the assignments I already have. And we're going to call this New Assignment 3, 4. We'll call it New Assignment 4. I'm going to go ahead and add the item. So one of the things you need to know is that when you add an assignment in this way, it's pretty much a placeholder. Notice it didn't have any description, due dates, points, nothing. It's just put its place here on the modules page. And one of the ways I know this has happened is you'll notice this little icon over here. It's got the slash through it. That means it's unpublished. In Moodle, there was show and hide. In Canvas, it's publish, unpublish. The green check is when it's published. The slash through the circle is when it's unpublished. And you just click that icon to switch it to the other one. So I actually want to edit this now and put this assignment together. So I have clicked on the assignment name, and now I am on the assignments page. A student would see only the description for this and some information about points and due dates. We're going to edit this. So I click the little button in the corner that says edit, and I get lots of options here. Here I can change the name if I want to, and then I have a description box. Now I know that you know how to write a description for your assignments. However, the university is trying very hard to make its information accessible to everyone. And there are some best practices about how to use editing boxes like this or rich text editors so that students of all kinds and all types can actually access the information you're trying to convey. So I'm going to show you some of those best practices right now. And if you ever want more information on these, you can go to accessibility.umn.edu and there's a whole bunch of tutorials there that can help you learn about accessibility. So the first thing I'm going to do is say that I need some instructions for the students and I know I am also going to have some resources. So here's your first one. You know these are headings. Many times people will highlight these and change the font size and bold it and underline it. A much better practice is to go over here where you see paragraph. Click there and actually change it to the headers. You'll notice they decrease in size going down and you'll also notice header one is missing because that's going to be the size for our title, like it's automatically there. So this is the next heading. So I'm going to make that 
heading to, and I'm also going to make resources heading to. This allows people with visual impairment to much more quickly jump between headings. And now let's say that there's a couple of things you've got to do here. So um, read this article. Um, and I want them to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and put a 1. Now notice I just did this. I want to make a list. So I'm going to either use the dots or the numbers. If I want them to do it in order, I'm going to use the numbers. If it doesn't matter the order, I'm going to use the dots. In this case, the order doesn't matter. But now I want to link to the actual article that I want them to read. So I'm going to go to my files. So this is the coolest thing about Canvas. Over here on the right-hand side, now if your window is smaller, it'll be underneath everything. But over here on the right-hand side, we have kind of the links menu. I'm going to click on the files tab, and this will show me all of my files. Um, I think maybe I put this in resources. So let's see. Here's an article. I want them to read this article. It's already in my files, so I don't have to upload a new one, though you notice that option is still there. If I click on this while the text is highlighted in here, now pay close attention to that text. I'm going to click on it. Did you see it flash yellow? That yellow flash means you have just created a link to that Canvas object, that file, with those words. And this is called a hyperlink. Now this is actually a really cruddy hyperlink because it's article and it doesn't really mean anything. So maybe what I really want to do here is call it the Jacobson article. That way it means a little bit more. And when they click on it, you'll notice that my file name is Jacobson, Binkowski, and Olszewski, 1996. Makes it very clear that they've made it to the right spot. So in this case, I had text. I highlighted it and I created the link. You can also um, link directly to something in Canvas, and it will just take the name of what you're linking to. So in this case, I want them to take a quiz as well. So this is another object in Canvas. It's not a file. So I'm going to go to links. It's not going to be a page. It's not going to be an assignment. It's going to be a quiz. And when I look at the quizzes, I can say they should have already taken, oh, let's pick this quiz there. So notice it just took the name of the quiz and put it right there along with its link. You still saw the bright yellow flash. So voila, just like that, you've added links. Very cool thing about Canvas. So now you can use your descriptions to put the information students need to actually get the work done. You can add external URLs with that kind of a link. You can add images here. And actually, I think I wanted to show you this really quick because this is a little different. When I go to images, you'll notice I can link to a URL for the image. I can get a Canvas image, or I could go to Flickr and search for an image. Here's the thing you need to note. Notice there is no upload new image to Canvas. So if you're going to put an image in, first you have to load the image into the files bucket. And then you can go here. You can click on your course files. You can go to where you saved it, and you can actually add the image. This alt text is also very important. Um, for somebody who's visually impaired, they may not be able to see this image well. You should write in here what is important about this image. Um, in this case, it's a decorative image, and it's just, I think it's my dog wearing her coat, but I'll just put a puppy dog. There, one puppy. Um, and then you click Update. And there's the puppy picture, and there it is, and it's just beautiful. So these are ways to add things to your descriptions to make all those colorful things that you were trying to do in Moodle but didn't work very well. You get to embrace the listiness of Canvas because you can do whatever you want in the description for anything. This edit box shows up for quizzes, assignments, pages. It's all there. Do whatever you want with it. Uh, so now we're going to jump back to assignments. So we're just doing the basics now. So I'm going to show you really quick. Look, right down here underneath the description box, you can assign points. You can say which assignment group it was. Um, in, in Moodle, this was called Categories. Uh, how to display the grades. This is kind of an important one. If you have something you don't want to count towards the student's grades in the gradebook, you can check this box. It will not be counted. We highly recommend you also put in the title of assignment, like not included in grade, so that it's very clear to them. Uh, submission type I do want to talk about. In Moodle, you could have grade items and assignments. Assignments were also on the front page of Moodle. That distinction does not happen here in Canvas. Everything is an assignment. So the grade items in Moodle that used to just be in the gradebook 
you still have to create them using this assignment editing. But what you do is you believe this as no submission. So you're just going to be putting in scores for it. Um, the other options is it could be online. This is how you have them turn in online files. Very cool grading if you have them do that. You could, could be that they're turning in something on paper to you. So this just gives students much more information. And if you're trying to use Turnitin or VoiceThread, those are external tools, and you would choose that. And then remembering we're just covering the basics. Look, you can do group assignments and peer reviews and moderation. Yeah, go learn about that in the Canvas guides. There's lots of good stuff out there. Assigning to, I just wanted to show you this really quick because this is another difference with Moodle. Right now it's assigned to everyone. You have some other options. You can assign them to course sections. Here I have a few sections. I can assign it to individual students or more than one student. I cannot assign assignments to just a single group of students. Like I'd have to choose each student individually. So the groups you create inside Canvas, which you can do, again, advanced features, um, you can't assign assignments to groups. That's something that we've lost. But you can still have the same functionality by just choosing students. So just to show you how this actually works, I'm going to assign this to Anne's section and not everyone else. So only Anne's section will get this. I can put in a due date. Hey, what do you know what to do tomorrow? And then the other one I want to show you is this until. In Moodle, there was close like the assignment would close, um, you want to do that with this until. Once it is unavailable, students will still be able to click on it and see it, but they can no longer submit to it. So that means they can't turn in late work anymore. If you don't set this, they can continue to turn and work to this even late. If you set this and you say, oh, I'll take late work for up to a week, after this date, they no longer can actually even submit to the assignment. Um, I'm going to hit Save and Publish. Remember the Publish icon? So now, uh, not only will this be saved, but students will also be able to see it. Uh, it's just warning me. I did not assign it to whole class, which is exactly what I intended to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. If you save it to everyone, you don't get that warning. And that is assignments. Now, there's lots of cool stuff there. You're going to have to go investigate the advanced stuff on your own, which leads us now to skill four, speed grader. All right, I am going to go back to my modules so that we can get to this like a student did. And then right here, I have just type in something assignment. And the reason I wanted to show this one to you is I've got students who've submitted things. When you are ready to grade an assignment that was turned in online, remember that was one of our choices for submission, you can click over here on speed grader. And this is just totally cool. Um, here I have my different students uh, that actually haven't submitted. Uh, so I could choose a different student, which I probably will in a minute. I also wanted to show you this. Right now I'm showing only Mike's section. I'm going to show all sections. And there it goes. Um, so let's see. Who do I want to grade? Okay, I know I already graded one of these, but I'm going to show you this. So this student submitted a file. And there are so many cool things you can do with this. You can annotate directly on the file. So I've already done a little bit of this, but I'm going to show you again. So look, I can, oh, wait, what did I do here? I am now writing on it. So see, I can leave a comment. Um, I can add text. Hello. Uh, I like this one, the pen. You should just get rid of this whole section. It's awful. And notice I can add a comment to go with it. There's a highlighter, there's a comment box. So there's a whole bunch of cool stuff. Look, you can even change colors. All that aside, it means if you're doing essays, this is a really good way for you to be able to mark up a student's paper. And all it took was you submitting it online. And it's super easy for you to do this. I can assign points out of here. If there was a rubric, I would be able to choose the parts of the rubric that applied as I was grading it. And then down here, I can add comments. Like, great paper, I'm typing in a comment. Just going to show you really quickly, there are some other ways to do this. I can attach a file with comments. I can record a video of comments. So the reason this is just so cool is think about how hard it is to explain to a student how good their paper was. And now you can just do this. Hey, Sue, paper was pretty well organized. You really got to work on your conclusion. You just repeated yourself. That wasn't that great really liked paragraph two because you use such imagery that was so neat and so you should do more of that if you can um your introduction was really cool too let me know if you have any questions 
So now I have done that, um, I am going to go ahead and stop it. And what this does, oh yeah, now it's going to play. I'm just going to save it. So it means this video is here. So if you have students who are visually impaired, this is a great for, way for you to actually speak to them. There is also this lovely little icon here that allows you to record comments <laughs> and it types them in for you. So you don't have to do the typing. Hey Sue, this was really good. Um, I don't know what you want to do with this, but it's a great paper. So you can see you don't even have to type it in. So there's some really great features to Canvas for grading that should really speed up your grading. And then it would just submit this and now this grading is stored and the student would be able to access it. You should note that you should let students know where the feedback is. If you're doing it in annotations, maybe add a comment saying all your feedback is in the annotations on the paper, just so that students know where to look for stuff. When I'm ready to switch to another student, I can use the arrows to head backwards and forward. And like I said, you can use this drop down box to go to different sections or different students. And just to let you know, this gear will also change the order in which the students appear in that drop down. That might also help you grade a little faster as well. And that's speed grader. <sighs> you ready for the next skill. The next skill, skill number five, setting up your grade book. So I was in speed grader. Don't know if you noticed this. It popped up in a new window. So I'm just going to actually close that tab. And I'm going to go ahead now and go to where I think I can set up my grades. And it would make sense that you would at this point click on grades. And you very quickly realize these are not where you set up grades. This is the gradebook spreadsheet where you can see everybody and you can see everything. And there's lots of stuff that you can do in here. Again, that's all more advanced, so we're not going to go into that. Where you actually go, uh, so notice in grades, I've lost my menu. It's hiding up here. They wanted to give you as much space as you can, is you want to head to assignments. Assignments is the equivalent in Moodle of gradebook setup. So when you look at assignments, you can see that I have categories. That's what they were in Moodle. They're now called assignment groups. And I've got my different assignments in each of those groups. Here's where I would add a group. And notice here I can add assignments as well. I just need to make sure that my students have a way to get to the assignment, either by giving them access to the assignments over here in the menu or putting it inside modules if that's where I'm giving them access. So a couple of things to note. You can see the due dates right here. So if you've been putting due dates in your titles, you might not need to do that anymore. It shows up both in modules and in this assignments list. Uh, you use the dots to move, thing, move things around. And again, you can move them within, within a grouping or you can move them to other groups. Uh, one of the things you should note here, assignments, lab assignments, not included in grade. There is no hierarchy. Notice I don't have any subcategories. Moodle used to do that. Canvas does not do hierarchies, hardly anywhere. I think files is the only place it does it. It can't not do it here. It can't do it in modules. It can't do it in discussions. There's no hierarchy. So. Um, if you've had subcategories in Moodle, you may have to rearrange your gradebook a little bit to get those where you want. Uh, I want to show you if you want to set weighting, that is this gear right here. You would choose assignment group weights and you can set the weights in there. Uh, the other thing that Canvas does that Moodle also did is, you know, how we used to drop scores or keep the highest scores. Canvas does have that functionality. What you do is you edit the assignment group. And right here, you can choose the number of scores to ignore for each student. You can either ignore low scores or you can ignore high scores. Notice there's no keep the highest. Well, there isn't. So you just got to modify it the other way around. Um, and notice you can even say, but never drop this one assignment. The other feature here that's cool that Moodle couldn't do is your assignments don't have to be the same number of points in order to be dropped. It'll do it based on percentages. So that's very cool. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. That is the basics for setting up your grade book. But there is one really important thing I want to show you. There's this cool place you can go to see how students are seeing the grade book. If you click on a student, you get this little side card that pops up that gives you some big, over, big overview of how the student is doing. You should totally check out the analytics. But we're going to go to grades. and I'm going to show you what's happening here. Here are the grades for this student. There is something important you need to note. So far, they have 11 points out of 116. And there are more than 116 points in here. 
And it's because of blanks. In Moodle, there was a way for you to set it so that blanks counted as zeros. In Canvas, this does not work. So from now on, when a student has not turned in an assignment, you must enter a zero when you do the grading. It's really important that you get your TAs to do this, that you do this when you're grading an assignment. You even saw it in SpeedGrader. I, the missings came up. Just put a zero in for that student. You can also do it in grades where you had the big spreadsheet. You can enter zeros in there as well. And there is a way to enter mass bulk zeros if you need to. Just know that an empty score does not count against the student. So to get an accurate in-progress grade, so students know where they are at any given time, it is really important that you put in zeros when the deadline has passed and they have not done the work. There is this funny little thing over here that will temporarily show a student what their grade would be if all the blanks were zeros. It's not a great way to do it because what they see off the bat is inaccurate. And then when you do this, all the assignments they haven't even had a chance to do yet also count against students, and that's also not an accurate grade. So really, just enter zeros for missing assignments. That's the key thing. So that's the best practice. And now we move on to the last skill, <sighs> communicating with students. So at this point, we're going to hit over here to the inbox. Remember, this is the global menu. So when I click this, I'm going to wind up jumping out of this class. That's OK. We'll get back to it. So this is your typical inbox. First thing you need to know is all of Canvas emails will be forwarded to your UMN email by default. Unless you've changed your notifications, that's how it works. So you will still get notification of these. You don't need to use this. However, this is a great place to send out emails to targeted groups in your classes. You do that by clicking here on the little feather pen. You select the course you want to send to. I'm going to select, oh, I know this one has a lot of different things in it. So I'm in this course. So I could just type a name here, and it would pull up the student. But over here, I can choose to send an email to different roles in the class, to all the teachers, to all the teaching assistants, to the students, to a section of students. And here I can email groups. And it will track all the responses and everything else inside here, as well as sending you notifications that you have emails at your regular email address. So at this point, I'm going to cancel this and get out of this, because there is another place to do this. Here's a cool trick if you don't know it. If you press and hold on your back button, you can quickly jump to a different part of your course, because the back button might take you a little bit to get back where you wanted to go. I actually wanted to go here so that I could show you, there it is, announcements. Announcements are really cool because they're, it's a listing that is maintained inside Canvas, so students can always get to it. Um, an announcement is sent out to the entire class through notifications by email. That's the default. So when you do an announcement, it goes out by email to all of your students, which is probably what you want. And you can set your course so that the announcements show at the top of the page when students get into the class. So it bombards them with your announcements. And all you have to do here is click Announcements. Remembering this is going to go out to your entire class. I was in the class menu when I clicked on Announcements. And you can see you get the rich text editor, so you can add links and images and pictures. And so you can do lots of really cool stuff here. And then there's one feature that is totally the bestest. It's right here, Delay Posting. You can tell it when to send the announcement. What this means for you as an instructor which is so cool. You could set up all your announcements before the semester starts. Like, hey, your test is tomorrow. Don't forget to come. Hey, don't forget this assignment is due tomorrow. Hey, remember midterms are coming. Let's try and get these grades up. Whatever it is, you can set up all those reminders beforehand, but it gets even better. I told you Canvas was a lot better at managing dates. It's really easy to update due dates. When you copy your course to the new semester, you will be able to shift the dates, and these preset announcements will also be copied over with the new dates. So you only have to do this once. It's wonderful. You should totally try using that. So one quick note before I leave this. Um, in order for students to receive emails from your course, um, any notifications like from announcements or even emails, the student has to have, uh, the course has to be published, and um, right now, the student has to have been in Canvas at least once. So just so you know, that very first email you send out to students, you might want to do it another way rather than through Canvas. All right, that is our six skills. 
a whole bunch of best practices, some of the key differences between Canvas and Moodle. If you ever get stuck, remember there's over here in the menu, the global menu, look, there's help. It has so much cool stuff. Students can ask you a question. Who cares about that? There's the Canvas guides. You can learn a ton of stuff. Bugs you can report here. Ask the community, a great place to talk about best uses for stuff. Um, the support hotlines, chatting with support. Canvas is super responsive. Um, that is definitely a place to go and get additional help if you need it. You can also always contact help at umn.edu or your local academic tech support. And that is everything you need to know to get you started in Canvas. Good luck. Thanks for sticking with us through this really tough, tough transition.